What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Channel Chasers Mini Weeb Edition. How you guys doing? And happy 4th of July to our fellow Americans out there, because this video hopefully will be going out on the force. And what better way to celebrate the 4th of July than talking about an American Holy Grail War? That's right, folks. We are here to talk about the first episode of Fate Strange Fic, Whispers of Dawn. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. This is one Holy Grail War set in the good old U.S. of A. USA! 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 Let me paint you a picture, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever wondered what a Holy Grail War in America would be like? Strange fake gives you that. And the Holy Grail War is set in Nevada, in the town of Snowfield. And it is bonkers as all hell. This is an anime we have been looking forward to for a long time, ever since the light novel series started. And you guys should know, uh, especially if you are people who have checked out the channel because you watch me on Twitch. I'm a huge Fate fan, and so is Tony. I mean, as you can see, our individual mascots are Fate servants. That is correct. And they are Nero of the Saber class for me. Yep. Kikal of the Lancer class for Jay. Yep, yep, yep. So, what is it about Fate, Strange Fate, Whisper of Dawn? What is it about? What's the premise? Well, it is the adaptation of the first volume of the light novel, which is basically the introductions to those who will play a pivotal role on the full side of this Holy Grail War. Yep, so it's very similar to the Last Order special that we got for FGO to prepare for Babylonia. If you guys don't remember the Last Order special, if you're not a Fate fan, it basically does a fast-forward explanation of the prior singularities and the opening events of FGO uh, in anime form. That is correct. So, the whole thing that you need to know, which bit of a critique going off it feels like it's a bit zooming oh yeah it is what it is. you can't really uh deny that but uh also fun fact for those of you who are not in the know because this is an american grail war crunchyroll decided in their infinite wisdom to drop the dub first instead of the sub which, which i is think is awesome like, because I have a personal rule as an anime fan that I watch things, if I'm watching something that is not set in Japan, like, in a, in, it's a set in, like, a different country or whatever, or an analogous different country, then I watch it in dub. Like, Full Metal Alchemist, I've never seen either version in the Japanese. I've only watched them in dub. Um, and uh, stuff like Vinland Saga. Watch it in dub, because they're Nordic names, and I don't want to hear Japanese people try to pronounce Nordic names. I mean, I did, and it's fucking hysterical. Mm -hmm. it's uh, amazing. But yeah, like, you know, stuff in America, I watch the dub first. Uh, like, uh, like uh, you know, Bakuno, the, the uh, mafia anime. That was dope. Which, for those of you who don't know, the author of Strange Fate, is the author of Bakuno and Zubrawara. Yep, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And let's just say this author gets a lot of fame when it comes to certain concepts of the Nazi-verse as a whole. And what I, what I love, and we talked about this off-camera, is that um, Nasu, as, you know, somebody who's in charge of an immense media empire, like, he is not afraid to let other artists and creatives play in his toy box, so to speak. Yeah, and since uh, Fate as a whole is a kaleidoscope of different realities, mm -hmm. it would make sense for different realities to play out. And it's also why Fate is very liberal about, like, 
Dojin's fan fiction and like fan made works. They don't really hit people with copyrights and stuff, which is why I'm not afraid to do any fake videos. Yeah, and a lot of things are open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, one thing that I love about Strange Fate is that it took concepts from different uh, fate works, like Apocrypha. It's set in a version of the Stay Night Zero Verse. They mm -hmm. didn't really decide which uh, route they chose. They kind of nebulously. Yeah, they, they, they yeah they strange. don't they don't ever show the route. I I am curious which uh, which route this is. Cause but, the uh, I think the main timeline is the is the Rin route, the the UBW, right? Because that's the one where they actually destroy the Grail. Because that, cause yeah. that's, cause that's where that's where Elmoloy takes place. Yeah. But it, I mean, regardless. regardless yeah, yeah. Discuss, discussing the Fate timeline it sh we, should be its own video and maybe will. That's a long yeah, ass. Yeah, that's that, that's like a college level lecture. And I'm not ready to give a dissertation on like how the nasu verse works yeah, yeah. It, that in itself is like uh that's that that's a fucking that's at minimum a like four part episode if you want us to do it tell us in the comments we might do it eventually but we, that takes a lot of fucking research oh yeah but let's actually get down to characters in uh yeah yeah to the false the moniker of this Holy Grail War is initially the false Holy Grail War. Mm -hmm. So I think it'd be very fitting because is the first scene when you actually watch this special is the summoning of the King of Heroes himself. Yeah. The, one, the only a golden man sitting upon a throne. Everybody's favorite Babylonian fuckboy is back. Archer Gilgamesh. And that's in all the promo trailers, so it's not a spoiler. However, I will say, we are going to go into spoilers in this video. It's not going to be like the Oshinoko video. This is full spoilers, because we cannot hold ourselves back when it comes to fate stuff. I'm going to go ahead and yeah. say that right now. So, spoiler alert. And we'll try to, like, bring ourselves back to keep it within a cool... But yeah, I have to say, Gil is one of my personal favorite servants easy top five for me maybe top 10 but like i just i love his concept because gil in his different iterations are different points of his life and archer gil is still the arrogant fuck boy who has lost his friend but is still on a quest to for immortality right and that's why he has this arrogance to him. But you can tell also that he is for humanity and he wants to protect his people. He considers all people of Earth his subjects. So he wants to protect everyone. It's, he has a very similar complex to Shiro, which is why he's a really great foil to Shiro in the UBW realm. Exactly. And we cannot talk about Gil without the master that summoned him, Miss Pain. Yep. She is a very interesting character. A young woman made basically the representative of a indigenous tribe. Mm -hmm. And with her indigenous origins basically saying, hey, those from uh, the town of Snowfield are essentially invading our turf. And I, and I think that's I think that's really cool because like not a lot of people I, I find it funny that a Japanese man is the one that gets this right. Not a lot of people who understand how invasive settlers were to native territory. Oh, yeah. And, like, not even... A lot of people in America just take that for granted, honestly. And, uh, you know, this might have been a more appropriate discussion in, like, November, but shit, we're, we're doing this on the 4th. It's part of America. Yeah. So, 
Like, you know, I, I, I like that they acknowledge the, the dark history of the country. And the history of America actually plays a big role in the strange fake war. Um, yes, uh, because one of the true masters of the Esperal War, uh, Carl Daris, he is American. Mm -hmm. He is a member of a part of the U.S. government that is connected to Madecraft. Yep, and we and we see a glimpse of that organization or a, a hint at it in this first episode. Actually, no. Uh, uh, a different unit. We only see him operate as his capacity as a you know government official. Yeah, yeah. That's connected to magic, where it's like the firing squads. That's just him in his capacity as a government operative. Ah. A very different thing entirely. Gotcha, gotcha. Because uh, when you see that scene where he shoots uh, Langle, he explains to these uh, individuals who are just laymen, the, these were just regular government operatives, that how Macecraft worked. Mm -hmm. So when they ask the question, like, hey, does he, would he know what you did to him? He's like, yeah, I did that on purpose because I want him to know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I I want those arrogant fucks over in London to know America ain't nothing to fuck with, which exactly. is very American and appropriate for the Fourth of July because that's what America did. And uh, also the other American character that gets a lot of focus within Strange Fake because it makes sense is Police Chief Orlando Reeves. Man, he he's got drip, man. I I love his look. His character design is awesome. He looks like a combination of like L Lieutenant Surge and Shishigo. Yeah, but with uh with Orlando, he is very rooted in the good old boy American values mm -hmm. where he truly believes in justice. Police chief and shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he devised his plan as a Magus to basically create the Clan Galatane as his squad to take down Gil because of his servant, False Caster, that being Alexander Dumont. And yeah, we know the controversy. I don't agree with it either. He should be black. I'll get that out of the way. He should be black. But then again, with the way uh, Dumas acts in story, that can be viewed as a bit... Uh, can it be a bit negative, I say? I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's black stereotyping still. But... You know, he, that still doesn't mean he shouldn't be black. Because, like, he is the one of the most important black authors in history. Which I agree with you 100%. But I, but I can also play the advocate, of course, here. Yeah. I could see the problematic way that uh, the author saw. Like, yeah, if I were to actually make him black, it could be a problem. Yeah, and I mean, personality-wise, he doesn't match the accounts of Dumas in history. Yeah, this is why this is a false version of Dumas. Oh, okay, that makes see that makes more sense. So all the false servants are there's some things that they lack. They are encapsulations of things that are notable. Mm -hmm. Like I explained to you off camera, uh, the noble phantasms associated with this Dumas are about revising things, about mm -hmm. improving on things because of his notability, like notoriety in co-authorship. Yeah. And being an expector. So yep, and he was also an editor for a lot of works as well. Yes, so he's used in that capacity. So this is not a full Dumont. And ah. Another, so another representation of that false, uh, all the false servants have is that there's an aspect of themselves that is missing. Gotcha. Like, no name assassin doesn't have. She isn't a Hassan. She was on the verge of becoming a Hassan, but due to her just basically copying the other Zebanias of 
her predecessors not creating something new, she was denied that role. Ah, okay. And how Pale Rider is essentially the representation of death itself, but doesn't have an actual consciousness. Mm -hmm. And how uh, Jack the Ripper, in this case, Paul's Berserker, he is looking to find out who he actually is, so he can actually have his name implanted in the throne of heroes itself. Yeah, which is a really interesting concept, because, you know, Jack has been explored in Fate, for anyone familiar with Apocrypha, of course. Best murder daughter. Uh, but, you know, this is a really interesting, unique take, because, like, this more focuses on the anim anonymity and, like, ambiguity of the legend of Jack the Ripper. And that's really cool. Yeah. When Strange Pick was announced initially back many, many, many years ago, I thought the False Serpents always represented a concept that is antithetical to what a true serpent is. Mm -hmm. How, you know, Gil may not be fully Gogo. Gil, Gil and Enkidu themselves are not fully Gil and Enkidu in a sense. Mm -hmm. They're the representations of things that they don't naturally fit into. Like, Gil is not the most natural fit for a archer. For example, yep. they could do themselves do not fit the mold of a lancer, but they are false archer and false lancer, respectively. It's the roles that they landed into. So they're the more defined characters. Yeah. That already know and that are established. And and you know people are already familiar with Gil as, you know, archer from Zero from Stay Night, so. It's also just a good bit of fan service, you know? Pretty much, yeah. And when we get to the true servants in this Holy Grail War, they are the representatives of what actual servants are. They mm -hmm. are the pinnacle of their myths and legends. Like, uh, there is a reason why, why Faldaris says that they cannot summon a saber because sabers are viewed as the most powerful. Mm-hmm. You can never truly have a false saber. Not necessarily. So that's why the, the false royal war was removed. Uh, has removed the saber class. Yep. And, uh, the, but we gotta talk about the, the mastermind behind this whole... Yeah, so Francesca Perlotti is absolutely terrifying. Little girls in anime are usually very terrifying and she's not a little girl she's you know uh, just a, sh a short woman oh yeah but like tiny women and tiny women in positions of power in anime are always scary but like there is something super unsettling about uh, Francesca's cavalier attitude. Uh, I mentioned it while we were watching the episode. She gives me a lot of BB energy for any fellow FGO players out there or anyone who's played uh, Extra or no, Extella and, uh, and uh, all that stuff. And it's what I told you while we were watching it. Mm -hmm. It's that she has like years upon years of experience as a mage. Mm -hmm. She is the Darnit. She is the Vulcan of this story. She yeah, which it, it it's one. it's kind of a, it's a necessary like trope. You can't really have a fate story without having a body hopper as your main villain. Yeah, she's not the main villain per se, but she is. The yeah, she's the, the mastermind. Yeah, yeah, she's the primary antagonist. She's the mastermind behind creating the false for a war. Mm -hmm. But she isn't like the main main antagonist. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you can be able to summon yourself uh, from a different point in time, being your original body as a servant, as true caster, I mean, come on now. You gotta be that powerful. Man, that shit is crazy. And it just, it shows not only, like, Perlati's power, but also their vanity and arrogance. Mm -hmm. The only person that could get the job done... It's myself. And that's the thing.
something about uh, the story in particular. That's why I mentioned that it takes a lot of elements from Apocrypha because mm -hmm. this Grail Ward technically is a is a free for all mm -hmm. between all thirteen servants. Yep. Because let me just remind you folks, there is no false saber. There is one true saber, and that is the one individual we see at the end of this story. The man, yeah. the myth, the legend. Richard, Richard the first. AKA Richard Lionheart. Oh yeah. man. And you know, we won't say anything about what he does. But let me tell you. Any of you any of you saber stands out there, Richard represents you. That he does. He is the biggest saber simp. Yep. But he is also one of the most fascinating sabers in all of the Nasuverse, I would say. Oh yeah, for sure. Because, well, one thing I can say about Richard is that he also uses Excalibur. That's one thing that's mentioned. But, here's the cool thing. Since he's using Excalibur as a conceptual weapon, uh, being that he can use any object and call out Excalibur. Mm -hmm. He does that with a fucking spit. Oh, that's hilarious. Yes, because uh, since he doesn't have access to Excalibur, but since he regards King Arthur in such a way that it's the hero worship yeah. of Artoria, mm -hmm. that's how he's able to access Excalibur. I mean, I'm saying it in a very kind of uh, weak way. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to fully spoil it for, 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 for the anime onlys. Look, like, that's not, like, him having Excalibur isn't isn't a big deal, because you see it in the promo art. <laughs> like, yeah, and yeah. it's not the usual blue that you see Excalibur in Avalon. Yeah. It is color red to match his color aesthetic. Mm -hmm. But also, one thing that you need to know is that Excalibur isn't the only thing that Richard has in his disposal, and that's what I'm going to leave it as, because his other noble phantasms are far more interesting that make him very unique. As oh, a yeah, for sure. Being a lover of sabers. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, all the other true uh, heroic spirits that we'll be seeing as this series actually reaches actual syndication, they are far more terrifying than you can ever realize. I, mean, I cannot wait for true Archer. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that have uh, always wanted to see Herc, or Heracles in their archer form? Well, you're gonna get that in this uh, in this anime when we actually get yep. episodes. We we we're not getting we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty of True Archer, uh, because spoilers. But there are plenty of videos out there by great creators like Saya K Collections. They've done several videos explaining the fault true and false servants if you guys are interested in taking more of a deep dive oh yeah definitely and the masters themselves are very fascinating because you got flat stardust the happy ray of sunshine i love flat uh i, I like that he had a lot of spotlight in this first episode because um he is you know for those of you guys who don't know maybe didn't watch elmaloy uh, lord elmaloy case files uh, Flat is an idiot savant. He's he seems really dumb, and just like a naive child, which he kind of is. But he's really good at magic. Oh yeah, his his family, hailing from Greece, mm -hmm. view him as one of the most powerful mages of their line. Yep. If not the most powerful, if I recall correctly. And. Like, you know, Greece, if you if you know the Nasuverse, is one of the pinnacles of the magic of the Age of Gods. Mm -hmm. So, to being descended from an a ancient Greek family, like, gives Flat a lot of good stock in terms of just ma genetic magical potential. And, you know, um, genetics... In the Nasuverse, play a big part in a mage's magical potential and uh, magic circuits. Mm -hmm. and so that's and huge. Of, uh, interesting elements of characters, even 
beings that you wouldn't think would be able to summon a servant, like uh, the wolf, which is Enkidu's master. Mm -hmm. The wolf is technically a chimera that the creator of it tried to impose a way as a catalyst to, to summon Enkidu. Yep. As you, we saw a little bit of it. And and I'm glad they didn't show it fully, because, like, I, I, I can't take seeing animals get hurt. Mm -hmm. And no-name assassin's master, Jester Couture. Oh, dear God, this individual is terrifying. Yeah. I mean, all true ancestors in the Nosuverse are terrifying. Yep. Look, you don't want to fuck with vampires from the Nosuverse, man. And this dude, he is the epitome of, like, down bad. <laughs> Jester that people need to know is that you know, especially the revolver-esque part of his body where he can just basically transmogrify himself. I mean, originally he was a woman named Dorothea. Mm -hmm. So being a powerful vampire, a dead apostle, one of the most powerful beings in that world to be rivaled by a member of the church in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, yeah, because and Cervantes, we'll be seeing that lad here pretty soon. Oh man, and look, guys, like if you guys thought Kotomine meant business, oh, bro, yeah. Cervantes is way above that. Yeah, and it threw hands with Jester in Snowfield proper, climbing up buildings and shit. Dude, this guy is like a combination of Medea's master and fucking Hirei. And if you don't actually know the lore behind Medea's master because you didn't read the visual novel, which I don't blame you, it's super long. Yeah. Uh, that dude is absolutely insane. Like, he could throw hands with servants. Oh yeah, and uh, if you want to watch a perfect example of uh, what we mean when it comes to Cervantes. Watch uh, Saya's video on that man, and you'll understand why it, you should get hyped to see the overseer oh, yeah. from the church in this war. And I, like, look, man, there's just a lot of hype stuff with this series. You know, we, we've talked it up for a while. We kept it as vague as possible. We, we threw in a little bit of spoilers, but, like, I don't want to say too much because, like, there's so much cool stuff on the horizon. And I want the anime onlys to have those oh shit moments because I, you know, I know Strange Fake. I've done research into it. I've, I've read some of it. But... I purposefully, when I found out there was an anime adaptation, kept myself blind to the major strokes of things, aside from watching, you know, Saya's videos explaining some of the characters. I, I've kept myself blind to the, like, the, the major points. So, and when I got to watch it, I had those, oh, shit, moments, like, when, you know, Gil and then Kidu finally meet up and all those different things. I just, it's so fucking cool, man. Good job, A1 oh yeah, it look this is this is a this is a fate fan like just it's a feast. We are eating. We're eating good. Like you know, we've been missing a fate anime for a couple of years now. Cause Babylonia came out in like what, 2017? 2018? Yeah. So the last one even before Babylonia was Last Encore. Ah, ugh. I mean, Last Encore, it, it's, it's it's problematic in its own way, but it, it, it it's just a bit art housey, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not it's Nasu trying to be artsy while shoving all of his notes into one anime. Yeah, because it's like. Uh, last encore essentially is Nasu being like, "Oh, I forgot to tell you guys about this thing. Let me tell you guys about this thing." Mm -hmm. So, uh, whereas uh, mm -hmm. Strange Fake has a lot of more interesting concepts and a lot of shit that Jay doesn't even know because he wants to like keep himself blind, as you said. Mm -hmm. Like uh, 
There are going to be story beats that are going to be... You will cry, people. And Jay, did I not tell you? You did. You did. That flat I... story is going to wreck me emotionally. Yes. And, I, and I, I am fully prepared there, for that. If those of you out there know what I'm talking about, you better not mention it. Uh, yeah, because I read the comments. Please, please don't, please don't put it in the comments. Yeah, just, uh, if you want to confirm something about that, I may or may not confirm it for you. Yeah, Tony, Tony will also look at the comments. So, you know, I, uh, he, he will warn me if there are spoilers in there. Uh, and he can answer them. But uh, I'm I'm not I'm not looking at any spoilers. Yeah, so I'm not in the mood to ruin my friend's good time with this story. Uh, yeah, because because this is because this is something I've been hy uh, hyped about for years, man. Like, look, I I am a huge Fate fan. The Fate franchise means a lot to me. I have a whole shelf just dedicated to Fate figures, like. Yeah, it, it it's a it's a big deal, and like fate anime are always great in some regards. Like I talk shit about Last Encore, but like it actually made me like a character that I did not like at all in like in like regular Extra or Excella or FGO. And that's Nero Claudius. I like Nero Claudius in Last Encore. She's probably the most, the only interesting character in there besides Rhyme. Yeah. Even though uh, the English voice actress doesn't Uma at all, but <laughs> yeah, it, 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 that's a um, that's an Uma stand uh, personal that day. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But, but there are great waifus here in this show too. If you just want to watch Fate for waifus. Yep. I mean, we would, uh... Tina is pretty cute. And... Yeah, but she's, like, much Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she's had pet territory. Jack turned into a sexy lady. That, that was, like, for, like, a moment in time. Yeah. It was a gag, but still. Yeah, most of the time, Jack is a watch. <laughs> yep. Uh... I would question your decision-making if... Uh, Francesca is your seed. Some people like the cr some people like to stick their dick in crazy. I ain't judging them for that. It's like I I'm not judging them for that. It's just more the megalomania. Just you know that. Some people are into that, man. It's like, hey, you do you, buddy. But best be careful. She might uh, she might bob at you if you're not. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, me personally, I, I, I would stay the far as far the fuck away from that as possible. But you know, I did like, uh, I did like uh, Orlando's secretary. She was pretty cute. Yeah, that is uh, Vera Lovett. Yep. Uh, she a cutie. She a cutie. Yep, and uh, and, and, and the uh, the phone operator from the Major Association is yeah, also very cute. She was a and I love her energy. Um, and then uh, also, uh, you know, real quick, uh, slight spoiler uh, for people who haven't seen the special. So warning here. Uh, we do get to see the man himself. For FGO players, uh, they might only know him as, oh, that's the K-Scope guy. But for like hardcore type moon, like fate, not supers fans, we know him as the wizard Zelrich. So the reason he, he's the one that crafted the uh, kaleidoscope wands. From, yep. Uh, Prisma Ilya. Yep, from Prisma Ilya. Yep. It's fucking hilarious. Yep. He was like, you know what? You know what this world? The, you know what this particular world needs? Magical girls. <laughs> and it is the same Zelrich because Zelrich exists in a dimension that is outside of the multiverse, and he can view it all. Individual that mentions fucking force, which is this is cosmic force of insanity. Yep, uh, I I love that he gives a shout out to FGO. Uh, FGO FGO players, you know, get hyped. 
uh, people who aren't aware of JP stuff will be unaware of what he's talking about, but there is an FGO shout out in the uh, Zalbert Sheen. Yep. Where she is instead a blonde. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And she, uh, like in the original plan for Stay Night, is the master of Saber. <coughs> Richard Lionheart. Yep, exactly. It goes it's and full it's very full circle because like you know, Saber is Nasu. Look, he says Mave is his favorite servant, which you know it's probably true. He seems to be very into Dami Mommies from all, all all the characters that have been introduced in Fate. But uh, his original favorite, and you know the part of mythology he has the biggest boner for, is Arthurian legend, and he loves King Arthur. It's why there are like twelve Arthurias. In FGO. It's crazy. Uh, uh, my God. But you know, folks, one thing you could say about this special that's very hilarious, that's very entertaining, is that Weaver is so just like... Done with everybody's bullshit. Yeah, I, th that's another thing, you know, Tony mentioned this off camera, but, uh, you know, another bit of kudos we, we want to give this uh, first episode and just Strange Fake as a whole. Uh, Strange Fake does a, you can tell that the author is a Fate fan because, you know, not only the fact that he brought in Gilgamesh, a fan favorite servant, uh, you know, from Stay Night and Zero, but like... He, it incorporates a lot of different elements from various fate works. Like Tony mentioned, Apocrypha with the, the Battle Royale like style Grail War. And of course, it takes place in a version of the Stay Night timeline, which is why we see Lord Elmaloy. Like it, it's really cool. Really cool. And also there's a direct setting in when it comes to the year. It is two thousand and nine. Which for for which for reference the fifth Holy Grail War, where Fate Stay Night takes place in, took place in 2004. Yep. And that would mean that Zero took place in the 90s. Back in the 90s, I was in a very big Holy Grail War. Oh, man. And that happened in 94, 95. Yeah. I, 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 was, I, was, but, I was but a wee babe at the time of the Fuyuki War. Oh man. Oh, but yeah. God. So uh we clearly enjoyed this first episode. Shit, we talked about it for thirty eight minutes. Um I I, I, I apologize. No, you know, normally these are more condensed, but honestly, with fate, we we're gonna we're gonna fanboy. So it is what it is. For the first like dose of strange fate. Yeah, we we are probably going to do regular episode reviews on the channel for Strange Fake, uh, just because it's fate. Uh, and, you know, don't worry, folks, those will be like 20 minutes long, as opposed to this behemoth of a video that you are currently watching. Yeah, this uh, glorious deep dive into our collective knowledge and humanity. Yeah. Yeah, we just have. Since this is the introduction, we uh, this is where we. It, this was the only place where we felt appropriate to just fanboy. One of the first few times where I know a story more than Jay does. So. Yep. Oh man, uh, good stuff. So, what would you rate this first episode, Tony? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I cannot, for in good conscience, give it close to a nine. Mm -hmm. Bit of the pacing issue, but it is what it is. This yeah, is fucking long. yeah. For for me, for me personally, because I had that element of like blind surprise and those like genuine fan oh shit moments, I give it an eight point five. I'm okay with that. I mean, eight eight point five. It it, it teeters. Mm -hmm. it, it's just for me alone, but yeah. That, you and 
and I can both agree that this yeah. is a good first outing. For oh, yeah, and it, it felt like a fucking movie. Like, man, the animation quality was through the roof, like we mentioned before. Yeah. But, yeah, and those are our thoughts on Fate and Strange Fake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, but here's one thing you can also appreciate with Strange Fake, if you're aware with other Fate media, you can see little blinking you missed shots, like Gray from uh, the Elmoy Case Files. Yep. She be looking cute as hell. Uh, mention of Iskander with. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can waver. Waver can't escape his boyfriend, which that callback was really cute. But yeah, yeah. So. That was a nice callback. So. That is what we thought about Fate Strange Fake. Uh, we are always down to geek out about Fate stuff. And so in the comments, like I said, just don't put any spoilers, motherfuckers, please. Yeah, I will know what you be talking about. Don't be speaking nonsense. I already told Jay about some of the nonsense. Yep, Strange yep. Fake. So yeah, keep it keep it spoiler free, but we're always down to geek out about Fate. Uh, shoot, if any other Fate properties come out, they will become staples of the channel as well. Uh, you know, I, I, I want us to have a wide variety of content. So, you know, uh, you know, that's the whole reason I devised this uh, sister show to the podcast. And shit, this might as well be considered a podcast episode. <laughs> like with with the, with the with the deep dive thoughts that we put into. But I'm still going to look it just a review. Uh, anyway. Tell us your thoughts, feels, and theories in the comments down below, as always. We will be back whenever the second episode of Strange Fate drops, or whenever th we decide what our next seasonal anime coverage is going to be. So stay tuned for that. But until then, sayonara minasan. We'll see you next time. And happy force.